The term cross-dressing was first coined 28 years after the death of Richard Wagner, so he was way ahead of his time. No, actually he wasn't. The term is just over 100 years old, but the act of dressing in clothing designed for the opposite gender has been going on for much of recorded history. In the past, women have dressed like men in order to be taken more seriously, and men have cross-dressed a lot in theater and literature and music for various reasons. But sometimes, in music history, you come across composers who just want to cross-dress for the fun of it. No other reason. And that's what we're talking about today. Under the spotlight first is the arrogant, brilliant titan of opera known as Richard Wagner. And being included in a talk on cross-dressing is not the first controversial thing that's happened to Wagner. We could talk about his anti-Semitism, his questionable ethics, his virtually unprecedented arrogance. He was just a scary, scary man who also liked to wear women's underwear. Wagner liked to wear panties and negligees, especially the pink ones, and the satin ones, and the silk ones. He probably thought that this little quirk was going to affect his reputation, so he often placed the orders under his wife's name. Later on, he would build a special room in his home for his habit. Okay, and then there was Maurice Ravel. He was not at all the scary character that Wagner was. It took him a while to get any sort of attention. He did poorly at school, but he loved attention. And he certainly got it when he got together with his circle of friends and danced around in a tutu and tights and falsies too. Franz Schubert, he didn't cross-dress that we know of, but he certainly appreciated the cross-dressing of some close friends. And really, it's just remarkable how something so old is still so shocking. These men are some of music's biggest names. They knew their habits would shock people, and they still do over a century later.